The appointed hour of six o'clock having been reached, I call the meeting of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals to order. My name is Steve Judge. As ZBA Chair, I want to welcome everybody to this meeting. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended by Chapter 22 of the Acts of 2022, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access this meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Additionally, the meeting are recorded and may be viewed via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel and ZBA webpage. In accordance with the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 40A and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties and interest. We will begin with a roll call of the ZBA members and panel for tonight's meeting. Steve Judge is present. Mr. Craig Meadows? Present. Mr. John Gilbert? Here. Ms. Sarah Marshall? Present. Also attending the public hearing tonight, or public meeting tonight, is Maureen Pollock, planner with the town. The, Zone of Bo the Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 48 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, convenience, and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. One of the most important elements of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw is section 10.38. Specific findings from this section must be made for all of our decisions. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they, they should do so by indicating uh, with using their raised hand function on their screen. The chair will, the assistance of the staff will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, provide your name and address for the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where information about a project and input from the public is gathered, followed by public meetings for each. The public meeting portion is where the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition is heard by the board as distinct and is evaluated on its own merits, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily, for a, spe a special permit, the board has 90 days from the close of the hearing to file the decision. For a variance, the board has 100 days from the date of filing to file its decision. No decision is final until the written decision is signed by the sitting board members and is filed with the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there is a 20-day appeal period for an aggrieved party to contest the decision with the relevant judicial body in superior court. After the appear appeal period, the premise must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds to take effect. Before we begin tonight's agenda, I want to welcome our new associate member, Sarah Marshall. Sarah, we're putting you to work right away. Uh, we're glad to have you on board the board. Thank you, happy to be with you. Tonight's agenda is a public meeting on ZBA FY 2023-01, U Drive South LLC, for the review and approval of the de minimis changes to the approved site plan approved context rendering and photos, review and approval of proposed designs of freestanding sign and monument sign, and for the review and approval of three additional new signs proposed pursuant to conditions one and 61 of the previously approved ZBA special permit, ZBA FY 2020-26, located at one University Drive South, map 13D, parcel 82, professional and research park, PRP zoning district. After that, we have a period of general public comment and then any other business not anticipated within 48 hours. Our first order of business is ZBA FY 2023-01, U Drive South LLD for the review and approval of de minimis changes to the approved site plan, approved context rendering and photos, review and approval of the proposed design of the freestanding free sign and monument sign 
and for the review and approval of three additional signs proposed pursuant to conditions one and 61 of the previously approved special permit ZBA FY 2020-26 located at one university's drive south map 13D parcel 82 professional and research park zoning district. Are there any disclosures? Um, the board conducted a site meeting on Tuesday morning. Board members Marshall and I toured the site. We walked around the building, viewed where each of the signs would be installed. We questioned which signs would be to, were to be illuminated. We saw a photo of the model of what an illuminated sign would look like. We asked some general questions about the progress of the construction and the extent to which the units were rented. We also asked about the status of the five affordable units. After we finished reviewing the proposed signage, we visited three completed unit, rental units and saw the placement of air conditioning units on the roof of the building. Um, Ms. Marshall, is there anything else you wish to add? No, I think that's complete. There were, they had um, installed mock-ups of the signs in several places, so that was helpful. Yep. Great. Um, the next order of business is to run through the submissions, and that is in the uh, project application report, which I had just a second ago, and I don't have in front of me now. Maureen, do you have that project application report, and can you read the submissions sure. yep. from I'm that happy. for me? Yep, I'm happy to. Uh, so the proposed sign plan uh prepared by Agonali sign company um with uh dated june 21st uh 2022 um and there were various uh sheets as part of that and then the applicant did send in um uh, uh photographs of examples or mock-ups of the lettering signs or wall signs that will show the illumination the photos showed the illumination and then for staff submissions, there's a project application report dated July 20, uh, 21, 2022. They approved a uh, special permit decision, uh, FY, uh, ZBA FY 2020, 26. And then the uh, approved sheet for site plan uh, prepared by Civic uh, Civil Design Group LLC dated March, 20, uh, March 5th, 2020. And the approved con uh, context uh, rendering and photos approval date, March 12th, 2020. Thank you. In this matter tonight, the applicant is complying with condition one and 61 of ZBA 2020-26, requiring them to come back to the board in a public meeting for our review and approval of de minimis changes to the approved site plan, three additional signs, a design of a proposed sign. The changes to the site plan involve the placement of one sign. Mr. Reedy, are you representing the applicant tonight? I am, Mr. Chair. And will you identify yourself for the record? Of course, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon, Wilson and Amherst uh, here on behalf of U Drive South LLC. You may proceed. Thank you very much. Uh, seems like we've got a crowd. So what I'm going to do is um, let me share my screen and we can take a look at um, probably the overall context plan so you can see the location of the signs and then um, really what those signs are. And I'm, I'm really happy with Agnoli for doing what they did here because it makes my job a lot easier. So just to orient you, you drive south is here. Uh, if you've driven past the site recently, this roundabout has been created. It's not finalized mm -hmm. yet. I think that's like August 13th. Um, they're going to do the final paving. Um, Route 9 runs at the bottom of the screen, left to right. And so north is to the bottom, south is to the top of the screen, just for cardinal orientation. We've got two um, ground signs and the rest are all wall signs. And so it would make sense to start with one. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. And it's the one right over here. And it's this one right here, the one University Drive South. So really I'll show some um, photos later of what really the inspiration I guess was for this. Uh, because it's illuminated, it's aluminum at the back. Um, and then really the outside of those uh, letters are are illuminated, which I'll show in a bit. So that's located right here. Um, 
a little bit of a background. We had thought about putting that sign ground mounted out in this area because the, the land extends. And knowing that the town wants to put some wayfinding signs, we thought that it would be a better use of kind of everybody's space if we put ours on a building and let the town have that that ground. And we're working with uh, Ben and, and Chris in the planning department to help them get those wayfinding signs. So just kind of preview of coming attractions, but that's why we decided to put it on the building. So that's one. I'm just going to go counterclockwise. You have eight um, and seven, which are these right here. I physicians of Northampton, nine inches high, really just the stuck on letters uh, onto the building. And then two, which is uh, two foot by three foot, so six square foot, uh, I would say directional sign, because right here, there's going to be uh, the apartment entrance from this ground floor is in here. And there's like a throughway, so called under here. And so number two, and number four, are really to identify um, and, and really give direction for those folks who are looking to use this throughway because this area of the building is the eye doctors, this area of the building on the first floor, and then this area on the building on the second and third floor are the apartments. So two is this, and I'll show them more closely in a bit. Three is one of those ground mounted signs. It's a monument sign and it's this one right here. It's illuminated and it's angled. And so this is to really capture the traffic that is coming up uh, and coming down Snell Street, because some folks may have come from the uh, east and are taking that corner in. So not necessarily seeing one university drive south here. Um, this is, a, I think we just think it's a good location for it. You come down to number four, which is again, really a directional sign, one university drive south and then I positions of Northampton. And so for those folks who are parking on the street, um parking here or walking there again is that thoroughfare right here they'll be able to come in and access the i docks through there and then you've got sign five and six and those are just the address when university drive south again that stud mounted uh painted black there's no illumination to these or to the eye physicians and then you've got the um so I've pointed out that one University Drive South here, and then you've got the last sign, which is the eye physicians of Northampton. As you'll see above it, there will be a light bar. So it's not internally illuminated. It is illuminated from the top. And so you'll have this one illuminated, this one illuminated, this one illuminated. And I don't believe this one is illuminated. I'd like the opportunity to if it seemed that it's necessary, but it doesn't seem like it's called out. So that's what we're proposing. Here is that one University Drive South sign that's on the building. And at the end, I'll get out of this and I'll show you what that's going to look like. You've got, this is from the parking lot, so it doesn't need to be too big. That's a six square foot showing where the apartment entrance is. You've got that sign that's at that angled at the corner by the roundabout, which with the address and uh, the eye positions. You've got that freestanding sign by the other side of that thoroughfare, as I've called it, through a. This is looking um, from the east. And so this is, as Ms. Marshall had pointed out, we had it identified here. And she said, well, wait a second. That doesn't make the most sense. And she's right. And so this is where it actually is going to be. You've got the north elevation, so this is looking from the north. So if you're at Ginger Garden, this is what you're going to see. And you can see, if you follow the mouse, the light bar, which is right here. That one University Drive South is not illuminated. And then you've got, you know, eye positions of Northampton up here, not illuminated. And that um, apartment entrance sign that we had talked about. And then this is um, the eye positions of Northampton. Over on this side from the Northwest would be that one University Drive South um, sign that I'm about to show you kind of what it's gonna look like at night. And so, and this is again, this is that um, North elevation. So if anybody has questions on this, I can stay on this one. Otherwise I'll just turn to the photos of their market basket signs, but that's what this will look like for one University Drive South. Oh, go ahead. Okay. 
So what I will do is, because I'm not smart enough to figure out how to do this otherwise, um, I will show you. So this, this is what it would look like during the day, but instead of Market Basket and TJ Maxx and all these fine retailers, uh, it would say one university drive south. And then, and this is um, probably my favorite of them all. This is what it will look like at night. And so I personally think it's uh, nice and classy and clean, um, not overbearing. And you'll see that it's really just kind of the exterior of those letters that are illuminated. And so, you know, it kind of fades into the aluminum backing. There's enough light there, but, um, you know, I think it'll be a nice contrast against the building and just not to, I think it's like 33 square feet. So really not. Um, 31 square feet, not overly burdensome. And so that's the proposal. Um, I think they all make sense given the use, um, the eye doctor's use, the location of this site. And I think they're all pretty tasteful and really fit into what Barry has really done with this project. So I'm happy to answer questions, but hopefully I let everybody out early. Mr. Reedy, um, I'm doing this from memory because I've misplaced the project the draft application, project application report. Four, sign number four is the one that's being relocated from, uh, it, it was in a different place. That's the one that requires relocation. Is that correct? Uh, five. What, and, and when you five say relocation, is, it was just from where we showed it on the building when yep, you were here at the site visit because there's um, the finished trim where it's actually going, and we didn't want to staple into the finished trim the words that say one university drive south, but where it goes is going to be on that finished trim, which is where it makes the most sense. So the one that is, there was one that was, we re, you wanted to relocate the sign in the application, is, it, and I, I don't have the number of that sign, I thought it was number four, but that's oh, the I only see, one. See what, you're you see what I mean? Yes, 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 yes. From the original, you mean? Oh, well, that's the yes, one. That, so, yeah. uh, um, I I went through sign by sign of of what yep. was originally approved, because. Uh, so it says for sign number four, the ZBA approved uh, the site plan showing a thirty-one inch by sixty-one inch monument sign located along the north building facade. The applicant proposes a change. Yep change the sign type so and so four is not a monument sign it's now a freestanding sign and the size of it has slightly changed and now it's located to the area along the northeast building facade yep. good memory Mr. i think yep, i think that's the only significant change of location and then there's a couple of new signs that weren't originally originally approved but that's again i think what we're that's what we're tonight so just for the benefit of the members and then the other previously approved sign which was also shown in the approved site plan was a 31 inch by 61 inch sign and it was look it is it was and is still located at the two-way entrance to the property and so um the only difference is it's it's larger it's 60 by 66 inches in size and so those are the two ones that were previously approved and the other ones shown are um, proposed. Right. Thanks and lastly, all, all signs uh, comport with the signs, right? Correct. Okay. I have no other questions. Does anybody else have questions? Any members of the board have questions? Ms. Marshall. To satisfy my curiosity, because this is new to me, um, why does one location? Why is one location better served by a monument sign than whatever you, this freestanding sign sign up on posts? I'm yeah, I'm gonna have to make something up. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. No. I mean, I, mean, I think it's. I, I think it's probably just. Um, I is it say visibility it's, for drivers it's, like get it up higher for that's yeah that, exactly that's my sense and it probably just like there's going to be a good amount of landscaping that's like where number four is um, is a little bit more of like a thorough fit i'm using that word again but it's just like 
-hmm. it's not um whereas number three it has that like kind of like gravitas of that monument like you are entering here versus number four which is more of like free flowing you need to see it but it's not supposed to like say oh here's where we are I, that, not that's the not the formal entrance. correct correct yeah. yes. okay thank you yes any other questions for members of the board If there are no other questions from members of the board, I'd entertain a motion that the ZBA approve the de minimis approved site plan, approve context rendering and photos, review and approval of the proposed design of the freestanding sign and monument sign, for the review and approval of three additional new signs proposed pursuant to conditions one and 61 of the previously approved special permit ZBA-26 located at University Drive South. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Meadows moved. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Gilbert seconds the motion. Is there any discussion regarding this motion? If there's no discussion, the vote occurs on the motion. This motion requires a roll call vote. The chair votes aye. Mr. Meadows. Aye. Mr. Gilbert. Aye. Ms. Marshall. Aye. Four votes uh, required to, for passage. The vote unanimous. The measure passes. Uh, congratulations. Thank you got you your very signs. much. Welcome. Okay. All right. Ms. Marshall, this is this will be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking they're not all as easy. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. No, no. You've lured you've lured me in. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this is an easy one. Trust us. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. The first one, the, fir the old <laughs> saying, the first one's easy, right? The first one's free. Yeah. <laughs> Next order of business is public comment on any matter not on tonight's agenda. Any member of the public who wishes to speak on any matter except that to this may do so for three minutes. If you wish to speak, please raise your hands. We have no attendees. It'd be hard right. for anybody to raise their hand on. So I see no public comment. The last order of business is. Um, in the last 48 hours. Maureen, our next meeting is going to be at the end of August. That's August 25th, I think, or something like that. That is uh, correct. The, the last Thursday in August. Yes. And so what we have scheduled for that, uh, firstly, um, I believe I sent an email out. Um, uh, John, will you be able to attend the August 25th meeting? Uh, off the top of the head, I believe so. Take a quick okay. Like that yeah, if you could just okay. Yeah, look. Um, and so at those at that the August twenty fifth meeting, we'll review the rules and rec the and um the following public hearings are scheduled is for the review of the rules and regs to see if we want to have any updates to that. There's an application for um, the solar project at uh Hick at the former Hickory Ridge at one ninety one West Pomeroy Lane, and then there is. Oh, I guess it's it's just those two. Okay. Yeah. And um right. yeah, and also I just I'm gonna send an email out, but if everyone could let me know um moving forward, um uh, uh, their availability um for the fall. Um so the board meets the second and fourth Thursday of each month at six starting at six o'clock via Zoom. Um so if you could just uh let me know if uh you know if if you cannot attend any meetings between now and December, that would be really helpful. And um, so I'll put that in an email as, as a reminder, if you could just let me know, because we're beginning to get uh, quite a few applications. So I just need to make sure that we have a quorum um, for these meetings. Uh, one of the items, in addition to the review of the rules, will be whether to, to increase are we going to discuss increase of the uh, filing fees for? Yeah, uh, well, the or legal is that ad. Still, yeah, for the legal ad. Yeah, and that's really um, the big uh, reason why we're reviewing the rules and regs, at least at this moment, um, because um, the planning department has has um, is in the red and and um, kind of owes a lot a lot of money. Um, so the legal ads right now are, are pretty cheap, and so we need to increase them to offset our our, our um, department um, funds. But we'll have material that'll outline that before the meeting. We can discuss it at that time. But yeah, that's yep. one of the one of the 
subjects that will be discussed at that meeting as well as review of um, of the rules and regs. Mm -hmm. All right. I have nothing else for tonight. Does anyone else have anything they wish to discuss, comment on, say? Otherwise, I'm going to make sure that Mr. Meadows doesn't burn his food on the grill and we can all. Oh, I... <laughs> all right. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right. Ms. Marshall, you got the second on that one. Um, this motion is not debatable. Vote occurs on the motion to adjourn. All, uh, chair votes aye. Meadows? Aye. Mr. Gilbert? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. Uh, motion passes. We are adjourned. Thank you. That might, might, might be record time, guys. Yeah, it is. I'm Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Can I ask something <laughs> that's not about the bit business at sure. all? It's just, I'm wondering if it's my speakers or Steve's microphone. It was breaking up when Steve was talking, and I wonder if that's everyone had that experience. Or just I, I think it was us, Steve's in there. Yeah, I was hearing the same thing. Oh, okay. uh, mine was, it was. So just I, lightly for me, but yeah. So it, it's a lot of like static or something. Okay. Is this better now? I turned my uh, volume down, Sarah, because exactly. yours was loud. Oh, I see. Hmm. But, no, it's still, yeah. it's, it's, we'll work on it. That's why we, we, we try to log in a few minutes before so we can un unplug and replug things yeah. and restart our computers yeah. and all those sorts of things. So, yeah. all right. We'll see you next time. All right. okay. We'll see everybody in a month. Good night. Bye-bye.